Okay, this is Hideous C. We're doing replay analysis looking at Sivir ADC. This is in gold 5. So, this is actually a pretty strong duo, Thresh Sivir, at least in theory. It can be. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, it's really in mid. It can be a little tricky to pull this one off well. And between Graves and Brom, you've got a pretty tanky enemy duo. So let's just kind of see how this goes here. So right off the bat, you kind of end up letting them bully you a little bit. That ends up working out in your favor somewhat because of the early Uter gank. But they're going to get level 2 before you guys now. Which isn't the end of the world with Braum Graves, but... It's, uh, it's always going to be stronger to try to get that level 2 first. For some duos, it's important to get it first because you want to have... You're all in, up and ready before the enemy, you know, before the enemy duo hits level two, and so you've got, you know, like a Leona Graves or something. You've got a really strong all in at level two, and so if you can get that before the enemy hits level two, then you've got a really strong advantage. Other times, you want to get level two first to prevent the enemy from, you know, the same thing. So if you have the Leona Graves on the other team, then obviously you don't want to let them get level two before you, and so you, you know, you do whatever it takes to, to hit, you know, to get that level break point. But in case you don't know, it happened. You hit level two after the three melee minions of the second wave go down. It's either those three, or four of any other kind, or any combination of casters and melees. Okay, so right now, this is kind of both you and Thresh's fault. But you, you're you're focusing you're you're focusing really you're tunneling in on farm, and that's good. Let me just back up here a little bit and just kind of look at some of this situation. Okay, so right now you are sitting on 14 CS to Graves is 18, and you have three in front of you, and he has two. So he, if he will hits both these, he'll have 20. You hit all three of these, you'll have 17. So he's beating you by half a wave. Assuming you hit all these, which I think you miss at least one. So the reason that he's beating you by half a wave is because they have been able to establish a more aggressive position. You guys have kind of caved to them from the get-go. Which again, in a duo lane, that's not all on you. But you haven't like been doing anything to encourage Thresh otherwise. And so it's you know it's just as much what you're doing as what he's trying to do. So like right now. Your boomerang is one of the highest damaging spells in the game. If you can land it both in and out, you know, it scales really hard. And so, you know, it's not going to hit like a truck like it will in the mid game. But man, it's, you know, you are able to really punish Graves. Graves has the shortest range. He and, he and Quinn share the shortest range of any marksman other than Urgot, if you want to count him. So Graves is really short. Now, you got to be a little careful about getting close to Graves because he packs so much punch, obviously, with his abilities. He wants to get up and close, so you want to respect that. But he has to get up close and personal to CS. You outrange him just with your autos, uh, but you also outrange him with your boomerang, and of course with your with your bouncing blades. Like those, you know, obviously will bounce through the wave and hit whatever. So you're not giving Graves much to think about other than CSing right now. He's pretty much free to just kind of wander back and forth, position wherever he wants to, wherever is convenient for him to CS. And so. You know, right now, honestly, he's got more pressure to last hit than you do, right? Because these these are the means that he wants to CS, and so this one is probably coming up next, depending on what the how these minions target go. It could be this one, I guess. But there's three minions targeting these two, and so there's just more damage coming toward these two, and they're lower health anyway. So he's has to be, he's thinking about last hitting. If he wants to pick up these two CS, 
he can't afford to really do anything to you right now. Maybe he could spend one buckshot. I mean, you can absorb a buckshot. You've got a spell shield. You can absorb one thing. And so he can, you know, he can maybe afford to cast one ability at you, but he's this is what his mind is on, unless you just totally distract him. And so as he moves forward to try to last hit this stuff, you can afford to just let these guys sit for a few seconds. They're not going anywhere. It's going to be a few seconds before they're last hittable. This one's going to be next, but you've got a beat or two. Why not spend that time, you know, hit Graves once or twice? You know, hit him once, back off, let the minions re, you know, reestablish their aggro. Last hit the one, hit Graves again. Use your boomerangs. The minions won't aggro you if you just hit your boomerang. You have got to be pressuring him in any lane, whether it's a solo lane or the duo lane. Effective laning is about uh, is about prioritizing CS. So, but not prioritizing just hitting CS. It's prioritizing last hitting. And so you don't want to be missing farm. But you don't need to be, you know, prioritizing just, just auto-attacking minions. In fact, often you don't want to just be auto-attacking minions. You don't want to shove the lane. If you sense that they have a stronger all-in, then you often don't want to be pushing the lane. You would love for the lane to just sit right here for as long as possible because it protects you from ganks. You can just run back to your turret. They have very limited ability to chase you if something goes wrong. You have a long time that you can chase them before they hit their turret. So you would love it if the lane just sat here for as long as possible. So you don't want to hit these minions, really, right now. Unless you have a specific reason for wanting to shove. Which there are, in some cases there is, but this one there's really not. So you're not pressuring him. You're shoving the lane for no reason. If you will, you know, you, so you do want to be prioritizing last hits, but after that you want to be prioritizing um, trades right now. Because your ultimate objective is to get Graves out of this lane. You want to try to force him out. You either want to kill him or force him out. It doesn't matter which. It really doesn't. The kill is maybe ideal because you get a little more gold for that. But it doesn't matter which. If you can force Graves out of the lane and establish a really strong lane presence and set it up just the way you want and get a CS advantage, then you set yourself up for a snowball that he won't be able to stop if you continue to play it correctly. So you want to continue to be harassing him so that when you do see an opportunity to actually go all in, when he does make a mistake or whatever, then he's very killable. You know, you've got him down to half health just by chipping away at him. And so then when he does make a misstep, instead of a, you know, correctable misstep, it's a lethal misstep. Okay, so I'm going to slow this down a little bit and just let's just look at how this goes. Okay, so you attack this one. There's not really a reason to attack this one. Or that one. I don't know why you're attacking them. So he, he auto attacks that for free and misses it. But look at this. Hit him. Hit him. Hit him with your boomerang and an auto attack. And then go back to last hitting. These guys aren't going to hurt you. Graves should abs, or Thresh should absolutely be up in this bush right now. Or at least up here messing with Graves. There's no excuse for this. But there's no excuse for what you're doing either. Make, make him have to make a decision. Make him have to sweat a little. If he's going to CS, if he's going to, you know, have a 5 CS lead, he better have bled for it. You know, make him pay for that. So you attack this one again, and there's not, again, there's not really a reason to, and then you boomerang blades, which does harass Graves a little bit, but it ends up costing you 2 CS. So that's just mechanical stuff, you just gotta practice that. You know, you get into a custom game and just practice your CSing with Sivir. Be really careful about how you use those boomerang blades on low health minions. You can use it like now, for example, with how health, well, not now where they're positioned, but now with how healthy the minions are, but if you were to use it now, you would be risking of losing, you know, missing a missing a last hit. So there you hit Brom. So that's the kind of thing. But that's the kind of thing you can be doing like all the time. You do not really need to respect Graves as much as you're doing, especially with your spell shield. Especially since Thresh has a shield. Thresh has a lot of CC. If Graves really hard commits, the two of you can lock him down and punish him. There you go. There you hit him. See exactly like that. You got a free trade there. I think it was auto attack for auto attack, but you could have hit him and used your boomerang. You're not using your spells like you could be. Well, there you are, <laughs> but you didn't hit anything, so... Mm. That's unfortunate. Okay. Okay, so there you prioritized a trade over hitting the cannon minion. And that might have been a misclick. They were close enough together. It could have been a misclick, but that's still just a mechanical thing. You gotta, you gotta polish up and work on that. Okay, so we're at 5 minutes, or just over. You should easily be at 30 CS by 5 minutes. That is not an unattainable goal at all. 
So between the couple you missed here, the one you just missed there, you know, you, you only have to pick up six to get 30, but 30 is where you want to be at at five minutes. As a target, you can do better, but as a minimum, be looking to hit 30. This lane is not going nearly poorly enough to justify being a wave down from average right now at all. So you can, this is a number that you can really easily increase with practice and focus. Um, so you're, you're focusing on hitting minions, but you're not really focusing on last hitting in terms of, or farming. You're focusing on just hitting the minions, but you're not really focusing on what's important about hitting the minions, and that's last hitting. And you're not really taking advantage of the windows between available last hits that you, you, know, you have to mess with graves. And especially Braum. Like, if Braum ever wants to do anything, he has to come into melee range. I mean, other than his, you know, Winter's Bite or whatever, his Q. Is it Winter's Bite? Yeah. You know, that's a range ability, obviously, but it's pretty easy to dodge by just standing behind your minions. So if he wants to get in the mix, he has to come into melee range. And that's obviously really easy for you to punish. But even Graves, you outrange, so... Okay, so there's two hits, and you got him. But now you got a break. I'm just pointing this out again. Now you've got several seconds. You don't have to last anything, and he's got two last hits coming right up. And this one will be too soon. So you've got a fair amount of time. You've got several seconds before there's anything here that needs to be dealt with. The lane is already slow pushing, because you have more minions than than uh, than he does. You have a one minion advantage. So this is going to push towards him, unless he, does, unless he just does something extraordinary to shove it. And you don't really want that to happen, necessarily. And so you want to delay that for as long as possible. So you don't want to be hitting these minions anyway. So now you can just position yourself right behind these minions. Or like, you know, right here. It protects you from Winter's Bite. Braum can't get you. And if you position right here, then great, you know, as the minions are getting low, don't do it when, you know, when Graves can just hit you for free. But as the minions are getting low and last hittable, walk up right here and just dare him to hit these things. If he's going to auto-attack them, you're going to auto-attack him. These minions will aggro you, but then you just back off and they'll immediately retarget. These minions might aggro you, but same story. You back off and they retarget. Or just duck into the brush real quick or something, depending on how Brom's positioned, whatever is safe. But between your spell shield, your boomerang, and auto attacks, you can probably chunk Graves down to about a third health here if you play your cards right, and he won't be able to do hardly anything back to you. But he gets it for free, and he's going to get this one for free too. He missed it, but, but he had the opportunity to last hit it for free. So your CS is okay, it needs to be a lot better, but it's okay at this point in the game. And you are catching up on Graves, which is nice. But you're not pressuring him at all. And so at the end of lane phase, if this just continues on for the rest of lane phase, you know, he just wins by default because, or not, it's just, it'll just go even. It's like, you know, nothing happened in lane phase. And if you're just kind of sitting here waiting for Thresh to make a play, then, you know, who knows? Thresh might never make a play. It doesn't seem like he's very good at Thresh. It doesn't seem like he's very good at support, to be honest, the way, the way he's positioning. And so, for... Um, you know, you don't need to wait for him to make a play. You can set plays up. You can put Graves into a lethal position so that he has to be sweating every time he walks up to CS. There you go. Now you see it. See? Good. You push him off, and he's at half health and you're at full health. And now you can really force it. If he wants this thing... He's going to have to go through you. And since he's at a you know, three-quarter health now after healing up a little bit. But again, you're positioned so far back that you're not able to punish anything. So as soon as you cross this line, you need to be... You thresh, or one of you needs to go ward. And if Thresh is not going to do it, then you need to go do it. Because this is what's... This is what will happen. As soon as you're pushing into this where the river... You know, where the river has a nice entrance into the lane... You gotta get vision up. You do not want to push past this point without good vision. Okay, so you spell shielded Graves because you didn't see Uter, and then you had to flash Uter. And then Thresh gets caught. So that's just a vision mistake. And it's a little tricky early on because you don't have many wards available to you. Yours was down because you used it in this bush. I didn't see if this was really a good ward or not. I don't remember. But Thresh should have had that warded by the time you walk past the river there. And if he doesn't, ask him to, you know. 
Don't just wait for him to do it. Ask him to do it. Okay, you have 1,600 gold, so you need to go back right now. Right now. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Okay, let's think this through right now. Graves just went back to base. Graves had... Let me back up a bit here to see how much gold he had. So you know that Graves is ahead, right? Not by much, but he is. He's got a CS lead. He's a wave up on you. And he has a kill. So he's... You know, so he's a certain amount of gold ahead. You can just count on that. So he's 6 CS up, which is about 100 gold, give or take. And then he's a kill up, which is 300 gold. So he's about 400 gold up, which that pans out here. You've got 1520, he's got 1890. So just shy of 400 gold up. So you know that he's coming back with probably a BF sword, right? BF sword and boots, maybe. Or BF sword and, you know, who knows what else. But at least a BF sword. He's going to have a significant item advantage. If you, you know, if you stay in lane with nothing. With just a Doran's, right? So he's coming back to lane. He's going to go back and buy a BF sword and probably some more. You have enough gold to also buy a BF sword as soon as you finish clearing this wave. Or even if you didn't, by the time you got back to base, you could buy it. But it's good to maybe have a little bit extra so you can buy a ward and some potions or something. But anyway, but if you clear this wave out, you have more than enough gold for a BF sword yourself. And so you have got to go back to base and get that sucker so that you're not stuck in lane uh, with Graves having an item advantage. So, And I, th I think you're probably aware of that. You're also out of mana, so obviously you need to go back for that reason. So I think you're probably aware of those things. But what's clear that you don't aren't really thinking is that Graves is already backing. So he's going to go back to base, and he hits base right now. Animation, what? Okay, right now. So he hits base at 727, and Braum is right behind him. So he's going to start buying. He's already he insta-bought his BF sword, so he bought very quickly. And let's see when he starts walking back to, ba uh, walking back to lane. Okay, right there he started walking back. So he spent even longer than he probably needed to. But he's walking back to lane now at 734. So he's going to take maybe 15 to 20 seconds to get back to lane, depending on whether he bought boots and stuff. So yeah, probably closer to 15 seconds. We'll see. Let me see if my math is right there and what the timing is right. Anyway, if you go back right now, like if you were to click recall right now, he is already going to get back to lane before you. Long before you. He's going to get back to lane... He's going to be like right here by the time you hit base, and he's going to be in lane by the time you start to walk back. He's going to have a chance to push this wave all the way into your turret, and by the time you get back, if he, unless, he's, unless he doesn't shove for some strange reason, by the time you get back, the turret is going to be eating your CS, and you're going to be even further behind. So you're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place at this point, because you, you, uh, if you stay, you're going to be a BF sword behind Graves, and if you leave now... He's going to be shoving it into your turret. You needed to leave as soon as humanly possible after you push the wave back, after you clear these minions. So you should have recalled right... I feel like... Yeah, you should recall right now. Then you're back to base at 739, only five seconds after Graves has started walking. Graves is only about here by the time you, st you get back to base. And then he is only about here by the time that... You know, about here by the time that you leave base... And then you're halfway back, you're mostly back to your turret by the time he hits the minions. And he doesn't have time to shove it into your turret. You, you walk back, you hit your turret right about the time that he's shoving the wave into your turret. And you're able to pick up all the CS and he doesn't get an advantage. So let's just see what ends up happening here. So it's not a bad idea to try to clear the wave before Graves gets back, but you got to look at what the situation is. You physically were not able to clear it fast enough. Because, because of where the waves were coming into the lane, It's this wave is going to be about right here by the time this wave hits it. And the turret is... Oh, okay, the turret took one. So the turret ate one of his CS, but now you've frozen the lane for him. If he's smart, he comes back to lane, and he just lets it sit here. For the next 10 minutes, if he knows what he's doing. He can freeze it here for as long as he wants to because of how nicely you've set this up for him. And if he's able to sit it right here, you're going to just... Uter is going to love that. That's going to be Uter's just Christmas present. He's going to make your life hell. You're going to have to be permanently overextended to even farm. You won't be able to... You'll have zero chance of getting kills because their turret is right here. Even Zed will be able to roam down and kill you guys. You do not want him to be able to freeze it here, but because of how you chose to push this lane that's going to end up right here. Grave, Graves might miss this cannon. Yeah, he misses the cannon. 
But yeah, if he just last hits, which he's not doing, but if he were to, then this lane sits here indefinitely, and you end up have you just end up in a hole that you have dug for yourself. So in that situation, you should have backed to the second you cleared that wave there, and just let the wave reset. The wave would have reset right here. Graves would have come in, pushed it a little bit, and you would have walked back to turret right here. Okay. So right now you are a little bit behind Graves. He has boots on you. Damage for damage, though, you're about equal, but Graves has more potency in an all-in, so you still got to be careful. Okay, nice spell shield. You guys won that trade pretty handily, but again, you're shoving it for some reason here. I don't know why. Why would you let? Why would you want to give them breathing room where they can back off this far and not be in as much danger? Everything you can do to pressure Graves, whether it's knowing that he's this far, this too deep, and so he has jungle pressure. Or knowing that he's in your odd attack range, and so he has trade pressure. Or knowing that he's in, you know, pretty close to being killable, and so he has lethal pressure. Every kind of pressure that you can exert on Graves is going to be distracting him from being able to just focus on last hitting. That sucked. Okay. Yep, this is fine, because Graves is clearly not there, so this is a fine time to go back and reset your mana. You bought a pickaxe, okay, that's good. With as aggressive as Uter has been this game, it wouldn't have been a bad idea to pick up a ward of your own. But... Kind of depends on how how confident you are in your support to keep things warded up. Oh, why didn't you take that? You totally could have had that. Might have just been too quick to react to if it came out of the bush and you didn't have vision of it. Okay, so... You guys can probably win an all-in here, if you play it right. If you walk up and harass a bit and Thresh lands a good hook. Graves used his ult, or Braum used his ult, excuse me. It's back up by now, I guess. But yeah. Overall, you're just playing this lane really passive. And so I just want to be clear, like, being aggressive for aggression's sake is not a good way to play a lane. It's not what a good way to play League of Legends. You don't want to just be aggressive. But you want to position yourself so that you can take appropriate aggression. So that when Graves overextends or Graves makes a mistake, you are in position to punish. So for example, let's just look at this right here. Because you could have you could have punished this a lot harder already. I imagine you might pick up a kill here, but I wanna just I just wanna show you just demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Okay. So you can look at this situation. Right now, Graves has Berserker's Greaves and a BF sword. You have a pickaxe. So you have a straight attack damage uh, advantage on him a little bit, whereas he has an attack speed advantage on you. So in an extended trade, he might win out, but that's only the case if, you know, if if um, if it really comes down to just auto for auto, auto. Which if he's low before you guys go in, or if he's CC'd for part of it, then that's not going to matter at all. So as long as you're quick with your spell shield and able to dodge his buckshot or his ult, or a lockdown from Brom. Then you guys can you're you're just fine here. You are okay to go in for a trade, as far as I can tell. So you don't want to just be looking to just shove that down his throat. It's like you look at his items. And it's like okay, here we go. I'm gonna charge up, hit my ult, and we're just gonna attack. No, that's really stupid. You're not just gonna friggin' attack out of nowhere. You're gonna wait until Grave screws up, and then you're gonna punish him as hard as possible. And because you are playing smart, you've observed his patterns, and you know what your strengths are, and the range differences, and your abilities, and everything like that. You're going to position yourself in such a place that you are ready for him to make mistakes. 
And the, you've got kind of a Rolodex of mistakes that he might make in your head, sort of. You know, he might if he overextends, if he overextends for a minion, then I want to be positioned in such and such a place so that I can immediately start auto-attacking him. If he uses Buckshot on Wave Clear, and that's on cooldown for several seconds, and that's most of his damage rotation, I want to be in position to immediately go aggressive on him for the window of time that I have. If, you know, if Braum were to leave or whatever, I want to be in position that I can immediately start pressuring him. Pressuring Graves now that Braum is gone, for example. So you don't want to find yourself in a position where it's just like, oh, wow, look at that, Graves is overextending. I guess I better run up to him and start attacking. No, you're, you are already anticipating that mistake. If Graves never makes it, well, then so be it. But you're anticipating that he might make it so that if and when he does, you're already in position to apply appropriate aggression. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I mean. we we'll just put a quick, a quick uh, interaction here. So you guys are, so already you're kind of, you know, again, you're, you're playing back. You don't need to be playing this far back. But right here, look at this. Look at this, look at this. If Brahm is in the lane, which you should you should assume that he is, he's in the brush, right? Because he's not visible, so obviously he's in the brush. Um, and so all you know, all you have to do is just position yourself right up here, and he can't do anything, unless he wants to ult you out of the brush, I guess. But that's not. I mean, you have a Thresh Lantern, you have Flash, you have Heal. Like, you know, you're not really in a lot of danger here right now. And so if you position here, he can't do anything to you. And if you position here, now you're pressuring Graves. I'm not sure what Graves is thinking. He's walking out from behind his minions. He's way away from his support. Thresh has a hook, obviously. You have a lot of damage at your disposal. Why aren't you positioned here to pressure him and to avoid Braum at the same time? So instead, you actually are backing off. Like Graves walked up here. He wasn't even like coming toward you. He was just walking over here. And you're backing off for some reason. You don't need to back off. Why would you back off here? You have heal, you have flash, you have spell shield, you have boomerang, you have you have every advantage in this situation. Unless like Uter is hiding in this bush, which he's not, because you you know he's not. And you sh you know, and you between you and Thresh, you guys should have this warded up so that you can be fairly confident that there's no jungle pressure coming. You know, so unless there's just some weird circumstance where somehow there's a gank happening, there's no there's no way he does anything bad to you here, as long as you're positioned correctly. You know, you, you don't care if he comes in and tries to auto 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 you. You can win that. You have a spell shield. You have Thresh back in you right up. Brom is going to have to walk a little ways to even be to be effective. And by the time Brom comes into range, you guys can just walk away. So instead, you back off this way, which gives which means then Thresh recognizes it though, and he casts out a hook. And it lands. But by the time that it lands, you're already so far back here that you can't take advantage for, for, a, for a couple of seconds. And that's worth an auto attack or two. Probably two auto attacks. If you don't walk back, then you're positioned right here. If you position correctly for the entire situation, then you're positioned up here. And Thresh lands this hook, and you take one step forward, and you're already auto attacking Graves while he's still stunned. If Thresh then goes in and flays, you're, in you're perfectly in position to be ha hammering him the entire time that Graves has CC'd. You get Graves down to easily half health before he can even respond. And at that point, you've won. Easy. But because of this, you're going to have to walk... You have to take a bunch of steps before you're even in range. So now they're there. Finally, you're in range now. You hit Graves once at the tail end... So yeah, imagine if you could have gotten three more auto attacks in, or two more auto attacks with your current attack speed. You know, instead of him being here, Graves is down to here. And that's starting to look a lot more lethal. That's if he hits a Thresh Wall, suddenly he's down to here. Then he has to pop heal, you know, pop heal, he's back to here. But you still have your heal, you still have your spell shield, you're, you're just fine. Graves is now low, and he's used his summoner spells. He's having to think, I need to get out of here, I need to blow heal and flash to survive this encounter. Whereas you're just thinking, I can just be aggressive. Right now, he's probably still kind of in that position, but he's not there yet. Yeah, see, that same situation, Graves would be dead right now. Or he would have had to blow his heal and flash. You would either kill them, or you would have had to blow his summoners to get out of that situation. Instead, he didn't have to blow anything, and he's okay. He's low enough, he'll probably have to go back to base, and you guys can establish pressure, so it was still a good trade for you guys. But it was not nearly as good as it could have been. Okay, I'm going to speed up through some of this. Let's take a look at some mid-game stuff here. So overall, you come out a little bit behind in lane. You have a little bit of a CS edge, but Graves has a kill. I guess lane phase isn't quite over yet, but that's where it's shaping up right now. Blue 
Why are you here right now? Look what's happening. Look at what's happening. This is a 3v2 in your jungle. Why are you sitting here? If Uder wants to push this turret, Uder is a little ways from being able to just blitz this turret down. He'll be able to do some damage to it, but by the time, you know, you're able to get back and defend the turret long before he can take it. If he wants to mess around with minions while your team is fighting, so good. You know, get up here and, and help. But instead, you wait until your team is out, is kind of all out of position, and now they're able to collapse on you guys instead of you guys collapsing on them. Wow, so many wards. <laughs> Okay. I'm not sure what you're doing right now. Why did you walk in this gigantic circle? So, right now, I'm going to go back a little bit more. Let's look at this situation right here. You've cleared the wave, and your turret is, you've pushed it the wave to their turret. I don't know if you have vision of them. You probably don't. But this is a situation where, oh, Graves thrashes out awards, so I guess it's a little riskier. You have your, nope, okay, so you don't have your vision, so pushing past her would be kind of risky. So that's fine that you don't continue to push the turret in this situation. It would be really nice if you guys actually had some vision so that you could throw it down on the river and then pressure the turret so that you're actually creating pressure on this side of the map and not and not just allowing these guys to mess around mid lane for free. Okay, but you, but you don't have vision so you don't go there. That's fine. So now you guys that see that Zed is overextending and so you push. You, you're roaming up to a sword Zed. Both you and Thresh somehow miss the pink ward. But right about... Mm, right now... This is, it's, a, it's over. Zed left. Zed is gone right now. You need to head back to bot, because look at the situation. You left bot to try to catch Zed out, which was a little bit, maybe a little bit of risky in the first place. But you either needed to catch Zed out, like catch Zed out hard, by like, like you know, coming up through river so that you're really cutting him off. And then you then Aurelia and Malphite can have the confidence to try to pinch him in with you guys. The way you're coming, it's like maybe you'll catch him, but even if you, even like as overextended as he was, if you show up here and he's here, he's not nearly overextended enough to be in actual danger. He just like shadow forms out and then flashes if he really needs to. If you come up through here, he's potentially in more danger then, if really a pressure's correctly. So, you should have come up through River, I think. You know, he didn't seem to see you from the pink ward, or if he did, he knew how much time he had to react. And so, but anyway, so regardless, as soon as he backs off and he's already aware of the gank and you guys aren't going to get anything from it, now you got to look at the map and reassess. Okay, what's the next biggest threat? What's the next biggest thing we got to take care of? Look at bot lane. These guys are going to be on your turret in seconds. And between the two of them, Graves has enough damage now that he will absolutely start chewing through this thing. But you kind of like come in here and now you're doing a big circle. And by the time you get back down, Graves has already got the turret to a quarter health and you can't defend it anymore. And it's gone. So this is just a matter of just kind of risk assessment and just map awareness. You got to be able to read much more quick. You got to look at the situation. It's like, okay, so if we're, if we're leaving bot lane, there's a good chance that we're going to give up this turret. So we need to get something back in return that makes that a good trade for us. And if you can get mid turret, that's great. That's a good trade. If you can pick up Zed and then get mid turret, that's even better. If, you, if all you can do is pick up Zed, who cares? If you go mid and pick up Zed, and they stay bot and pick up a turret, they're winning League of Legends, and you guys are, you know, I don't know what you're doing. You're not winning anything. You got Zed. Yay. Who cares? If you're not able to take an objective, it's absolutely not worth it. Now, if you see Zed here, and then you see Uter show up, and you see Cho'Gath show up, now it's a matter of, okay, we got to go mid and defend our inner turret, and maybe it is worth giving up an outer turret to defend an inner turret. And so that could be a good trade, but that wasn't the case. You just kind of roamed up to try to kill Zed. 
And unless you had a realistic expectation of being able to kill Zed and then shove mid before Graves and Braum could take bot, or at least in pace with them, you know, fast enough so that by the time they took bot and roamed up, you guys would be done killing mid and could back off. You know, it's just not, you're kind of, you kind of are dooming yourself to a bad trade because you, you end up roaming up and then you take so long to get back. So you probably shouldn't have roamed up in the first place, but since you did, you took so long to get back that they were able to take the turret for free. So now you've just given them a free turret. And they have all three of your outers down. And you guys don't have any turrets down. And that's what's, that is honestly what's winning them the game. Like this 2 to 10 kill score, who cares? Like that's, that's kind of interesting. You want to be aware of who is fed. Zed has four kills and that's, you need to be aware of that, that he's dangerous. But Zed could have 20 kills. And if you guys have all the turrets, Zed is losing. So this, this, this is secondary. This 2 and 10. Don't even worry about this. Be aware of who is strong so that you know how much respect you need to give them. Like, you know, Graves has one kill, and so you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Graves, probably. Or you can stand and fight with Graves for a certain amount of time. You don't want to do that with Zed. You probably don't want to do that with Zed anyway, because he's an assassin versus your AD carry. But since he's fed, even more so, you got to give him some respect. So that's worth being aware of. But in terms of, like, where the game's at, this doesn't matter. This is this is almost irrelevant, this 2-10 to 10 thing. This is what's winning them the game. They have three turrets to your none. Now, the three outer turrets are fairly easy to take, and so it's not the end of the world that they have three turrets. But the fact that they got all three before you got any is a bad sign. That's what's winning them the game. Again, you roam mid and you pick up Zed, even if it's 10 to 2, and you guys are winning, and you pick up another kill, woohoo, you killed Zed again, you're keeping that guy down, you're still losing. Because in the time that you managed to go around picking up 10 kills, they managed to take three turrets. So... You know, in this situation, it's both. They have the kills and the turrets, which isn't that uncommon because they've taken, they've gotten kills and then they've used those windows to take turrets. But you're not rotating and defending your objectives appropriately at this point in the game. So right now, now that they've taken all three outers, you guys got to adjust to even more defensive. You guys are going to set up vision in your jungles. And you're going to defend these. Each time they push a turret in, each time you guys are like push back a step, it becomes easier and easier to defend the next level objective, right? Because it's this is closer to your base, they're closer together, you don't have to walk as far to get to them. It's easier to rotate between them. It's harder and harder for the enemy to take these. And so there's opportunities for them to mess up, get bigger and bigger. And so you guys got to get vision down in your jungle. Just carpet bomb it. If you feel like this is the side that's going to be contested first, carpet bomb it. If you feel like this is the side that you need to defend more, carpet bomb it. Get vision up so that you can walk through this jungle free of without fear, and you can catch them trying to sneak up on you by, by sneaking through the jungle. Like, for example, this Zed. Right now, this is a situation where Aurelia knew to come up and attack Zed because of this ward. Zed's coming here, and he's thinking, I'm going to sneak up on Malphite and get an easy kill here. But he walked through a ward, and so Aurelia had plenty of time to react to that and get up here to counter gank, you know? That's the kind of situation you got to just get. You got to get four or five or six wards in here. Obviously, you can't do that alone. But with, between working with your team and getting every piece of vision down that you can, you are creating a situation where you are, are this. The, like these turrets are already easy to throw on, and these ones are even more easy to throw on because they're hard to take. But you want to increase the enemy's chances of throwing by as much as possible and you do that by creating vision so that you can identify when they are overextending. You can identify when they are making a mistake and punish it, whether that means punishing by getting kills, punishing by out-rotating them and taking more objectives than they're able to, punishing them by pressuring them so that it allows Nasus to split push, whatever the case it is. But vision is your vision is your really your, your way back into this here. So because of this, Zed should die here. It takes way more effort to kill them than it should because Aurelia didn't play that very well. But anyway, you pick up a kill, so that's good. You got to shut down. Very nice. And now you got to shove this. You got to pressure this turret. And you got to get vision down in your flank so that you can pressure it appropriately. So he's able to clear the wave. He didn't have as many minions as it kind of looked like for to me at first. So you're not going to be able to pressure this appropriately. But you can take this opportunity now that you've created pressure and you have a wave and now there's no minions for them to do anything with and you have a numbers advantage in the immediate right now because the Graves is not going to do anything. 
you have a chance right now to set up vision control around this area. So if you didn't already set it up around this area, you could potentially throw a ward or two around this area. So the next time this happens, you've got a ward on your flank and you're much more safe in pushing. So always be aware of opportunities to establish vision control in the areas that you want uh, to contest. That is almost as big of an objective as getting a turret, is an opportunity to establish vision control in an area. Okay, so you pick up your uh, Infinity Edge, that's good. But yeah, look at look at the ward coverage in this jungle right now. They have one, two, three, four, five, six wards in your red jungle. They have six wards in your red jungle. They're ignoring your blue jungle right now because they don't care about your blue jungle. Cho'gath is just AFK split pushing. They're contesting these two and they want to take Dragon the next time it comes up. So they're wanting to control this quadrant of the map and they're doing it beautifully. You guys have one, two wards. Now admittedly, it can be tricky to get vision control down if they're exerting a lot of pressure because you don't want to just blindly walk into the jungle, throw wards down, you'll get killed. But you can do it intelligently, like when you pushed up that wave up, then you knew they were gone and that's an opportunity to do it. Now you didn't have wards and you upgraded your, to a pink trinket, which I really don't like. The pink trinket is not really a great upgrade. You always, you, as an AD carry, you are 90% of the time want to grab the yellow upgrade, the stealth ward upgrade. Maybe 10% of the time you'll end up getting the blue trinket instead of a yellow trinket so that you can check objectives. There's some games where that's a good idea. Without needing to face check, you can check areas of the map or check the you know check dragon or baron or whatever. But in this situation, you want the yellow trinket so that you can help your team get as much mini wards down as possible. The pink trinket really only comes into play in very select situations. Very late game when you don't have any slots to buy pinks uh, versus team comps that are very heavy on stealth maybe. Um, there's a couple situations where it makes sense, but it's just, this is an order of magnitude less efficient than the green ones. For the green ones, you get two wards, or you know, two charges of wards. So potentially, you have you have um, you can keep your you can keep three wards on the map at all times with the green one. And every time you throw one down, you know, you're you're saving yourself 75 gold essentially. You know, that that would be 75 gold that you saved yourself. And so, whereas this one, when you throw a pink down, you don't usually want to move it. You, know, you don't really want to throw another pink down because it's a permanent ward, and so you're kind of wasting it. You're not really saving gold. I mean, kind of you are, but it's like if you have a pink ward here, for example, if this was yours, you could just leave this here for the for the length of the game until it dies, you know, or until you have a really good reason to buy another one and move it up here. But this will last you the you know for as long as it stays alive. Whereas, and you don't really you know you don't really buy pinks to move them. You buy pinks to either clear a specific area for a specific event or you buy them to buy long-term vision in a strategic area. Whereas the green wards, you want you those are nice because you can move those. Who cares? They're going to expire anyway, and so it doesn't really matter if you kill one a little early. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons, but the but but you will get about a thousand times more mileage out of the green the the stealth upgrade than the pink upgrade. It will serve you far 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 better. And since this team doesn't have any stealth champions or anything really, the pink ward is just kind of a waste. So get the yellow one instead. At the very least, it triples the amount of vision that you're able to put down on the map. And if your team isn't doing very good on vision, tripling the amount of vision that you can put down is a big, big deal. Instead of getting a free pink ward and having to buy green wards for the rest of the game, you get free green wards and buy maybe one or two pink wards for the rest of the game. Okay, so you're identifying that Zed is split pushing this turret and you're going to come down and defend it. Your team is collapsing on top. So you don't need to kill Zed or do anything here other than keep him from taking the turret and ideally keep him interested so that he doesn't just rotate up and and uh, you know join the fight up here. Looks like your team is losing anyway, sadly. So that's unfortunate. But you're basically doing your job here. Somebody needed to stop Zed. You know, maybe in a in a perfect world, Nasus would have come down and dealt with Zed, or somebody else would have been able to stop Zed, and you could have joined your team because you're a really important part of your team's ability to do damage in fights. But you're okay here. So absolutely do not get tempted to fight Zed. Don't do it. If you have an opportunity to poke him, that's fine. But don't put yourself in a situation where you poke him and poke him and poke him, and now you're out of mana and you can't def you can't do anything. You know. 
And you can't stay in lane and actually keep him off the turret. Okay, good. Okay, we're going to speed up here a bit. I'm going to blitz through a few minutes here and just stop if I see something particularly interesting. Oh wait, you switched it. So maybe there's a misclick. I don't know why you bought the pink one, but you switched it to the yellow one. Good work. Okay, so anyway, so maybe that was a mistake or something. Okay, there's a lot of time left in this game. I'm not going to look at that fight. I'll look at the next fight. This video is already going to be kind of long. So in a situation like this, where you guys are down five turrets, you are down a lot of gold, you're down a lot of map pressure, you are not able to afford to like go aggressive on them. And anytime you're in this kind of situation, you are playing a defensive game. You need to make them fight you on as good a ground as is humanly possible, which usually means under a turret, and ideally under an inhibitor turret. This is where you stand a good chance of winning a fight. The, other, the only other really good chance of winning a fight you guys have is if you have enough vision down in your jungles and are able to catch somebody out really badly. That's You still got to be careful with that because they're far enough ahead that it might take so long to kill whoever you catch that by the time you kill them, their team is caught up and then they ace you. So this is your best bet. It's just playing it safe, farming up, last hitting, keeping vision up around the base so they can't sneak up on you, and just making them fight you on your turret. This is a situation where the blue trinket might be nice because you guys can't afford to walk out and face check all the way to Baron if they try to Baron. So this is where that blue trinket might come in handy so you can check this to see if they're doing it without needing to, to walk all the way through your jungle and into Baron pit. Um, potentially you could try to contest this if you could position correctly uh, and get in, you know, get into place in time. But probably your best bet is yeah, just turtling up and fighting them when they try to take your turret. Okay, really dangerous for you guys to be here. I'm going to go back a little bit. Let's just look at the map right now. You have a ward here. And that's it. Right now, you know where Cho'Gath and Braum are. You have no idea where these three are. You probably suspect they're in this area, but you don't know specifically where they are. For all you know, they're sitting right in this bush. Or they're sitting right here around the corner waiting for you guys to overextend. So you don't know. You don't know where they are. And you know that it's a bad idea to go over aggressive and push out too far, because if they are there, and if there's a fight, they will win because they are so far ahead, and if they win, they are positioned very well to take probably two inhibitors at this point in the game. Well, maybe just one inhibitor and a turret, because it's not super late in the game. But they've got map pressure and two, uh, minion pressure in two lanes, and so they are positioned very well to take a, to take uh, you know important objectives off of you. So you don't want to overextend. It's not worth the risk unless you know for a fact that you have caught somebody out. You don't want to take the risk. You don't want to roll those dice. So you don't know where three of them are. So let's look and see what you guys do. You don't know where three of them are. So for some reason, you guys are extending past this point. What if they were here? What if they were here? If they were here, you guys just walked into a trap. Cho'Gath turns, knocks you three up, they come boiling out of here, and you're dead. Three people dead instantly. Nasus dies quickly afterward. Malphite maybe escapes if he ults through the wall or something. But then it's a 5v4, and they take an inhibitor. Why would you walk past this point without checking? without warding, without doing something. You don't know where they are. So not only do you do that, but you guys push past this point. Yeah, it's Cho'Gath. And have you caught Cho'Gath out? Maybe, but you don't know. What if they're here? You had a ward here, so you knew they weren't there at least. But you don't know. You don't know what, where, if Cho'Gath... You know, Cho'Gath takes forever to kill. 
So if to catch out Cho'Gath means you have to check catch Cho'Gath out when he's like on the other side of the map from his team. Because by the time you actually kill Cho'Gath, his team has had time to cover a lot of distance to help him out. So just really risky. And even if this fight happens to work out for you guys, it looks like it might. But even if it does, it was still the wrong move. It's a dice roll. You're rolling the dice with your game. It will not work out four times out of five. And even if it does happen to work out here, it's still the wrong move. If you're wanting to actually, like, you know, have control over your, you know, over your win-loss ratio. If you're not, if you don't want to just leave your, you know, your win-loss ratio up to, up to, um, up to fate, basically, you know. Or just luck. Okay. So you guys do find a fight, and you do win the fight. So that is good. You spell shielded Zedzol. That was really clutch. It was still really risky to do that. But. You take the fight, and you should be able to pick up two turrets here, I think. You could have been attacking the turret a lot longer than that. So maybe you didn't have time to actually take two turrets, but you could have got some good damage on it. Okay, but now so you took one turret, so that's good. That's your first turret. That's nice. You didn't need to back off nearly that far. It's kind of wasted time, but that's a little thing. And you pick up a Blade of the Ruined King. I don't think I like that. It's not that it's a bad item. But I think you needed to get armor penetration first. I would have bought the Vamp Scepter. You needed to get more defense first, basically. Either defense or armor pen or both. So I think that getting a Vamp Scepter and then going either Last Whisper or Bloodthirster would have been a much better call than Blade of the Rune King. Blade of the Rune King is a dueling item. And it's a nice item versus like Cho'Gath because he's a health stacker. And so yeah, you'll... You know, it'll be nice versus him. But mostly these guys are building armor. And so... You know, an attack speed dueling item really isn't... Really isn't what you wanted to do. You want to just go for more AD and armor pen. So that you can start actually like doing damage to these guys that are just stacking armor. Again, so risky. Okay, so you guys find a really sloppy fight. You're not on the same page with Malphite. And you're going to die. Yep. That's just like bronze team fight syndrome. So you guys pushed up. And you just kind of randomly went for a fight. You did set up some vision on your flanks. So it's not as bad as it could have been. But Nasus wasn't there. You're in their jungle. This is their side of the map. They have all of the advantages on their side of the map. You didn't have nearly enough vision set up to actually like want to pick up a long-term fight in here. And again, like you know, why would you chase them into their jungle? If they're in their jungle, great. That's a free turret. If they're in their if they're in their jungle, you know, that's awesome for you. If they're in their jungle, just take their turret. Then don't chase them in here and fight them. The only reason you want to fight them right now is so that you can get turrets. And if they're going to give you turrets without fighting them, then just take the turret. And who cares? Again, this is not what you want to be worried about. This is what you want to be worried about. So, anyway. This is just this is just a really, really risky and kind of pointless fight to try to take. And they end up taking way more off of you guys than you're able to take off of them. Okay, moving on. Nasus is getting to the point right now where he's a pretty powerful split pushing force, so that's really good. If you guys can create enough pressure and distraction for him, he can probably do a lot of work. Let me just look at this situation and how you got cut out so bad. Okay, so you hook, Thresh hooks Braum, which is fine. You don't want to go too committed on that because who cares, it's Braum, he's really hard to kill. He doesn't offer that much, 
It's not worth risking your life to take out Braum. So you don't. You don't overcommit. There's the Braum ult. You, you nicely position to avoid that. Malphite goes in. Aurelia goes in. Nasus goes in. Boomerang Blade. There's where you overcommit. You ran right into Uter, dude. And you ran right into Uter and Cho'Gath range. I don't know if you're tunneling on trying to take out Braum or trying to take out Graves. But you cannot run past the front line of an enemy team like that. Because you did pretty well, actually. Once once Braum gets caught, you're staying back. You're avoiding Braum's ult. And right now, you just run up and you start plinking away at Uter. You are the you are the AD carry. You are the one who is the is uniquely positioned to do damage to tanks. You pump out constant DPS. So right now, Uter is your target. He's the closest thing. Start attacking him. Okay, now he's moved out. Now it's Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath is your target now. Now Uter's moved back. Now you're attacking Uter. But you want to attack Uter from range, from as far, from where he can't attack you back. Instead, you walk back up here. You're trying to, like, Boomerang Blade or, or Ricochet, you know, Braum to death or something, which is really low percentage of success. It would be amazing if you got that. And you walk right up into Uter and Cho'Gath to do it, which leads to your death, which leads to them being able to turn this fight back around. If you're still alive and pumping out DPS this whole time, this does not happen. I mean, these guys are dead already, if you're still alive pumping out DPS. They're toast. And then these guys are alone, and Braum and Graves are basically dead, so it's just Zed. So it's basically Zed versus the world, if you're still alive. And that's an easy team fight for you guys. You guys win that really hands down. You've cleared Baron off of all of them, and you guys can go take something. Dragon's not up. You guys can push back the lane. You can reset the lanes, which is really important at this point, and get vision control back in your jungles. And then the next time you, they come up and try to push this, it'll be even easier, because they won't have Baron, and you'll have vision set up. So in team fights, your job is to stay alive for the whole team fight while pumping out as much damage as possible. But in that order, you stay alive and then you pump out as much damage as possible. Because to pump out as much damage as possible, you have to be alive to pump that damage out, right? So that's your job. It's not to get kills. It's not to clean up high priority targets. It's not to take out the enemy to carry. It's not to do any of those things. It's to stay alive and pump out as much damage as possible on the nearest target to you. You are absolutely supposed to be the one that's attacking Cho'Gath and Uter. You're the only one who can attack o uh, Cho'Gath and Uter effectively. Okay. Moving on. Okay, you kind of over aggress there. Overestimated your ability to do something. And again, like, there just wasn't a lot of upsides to you getting kills out there. So it wasn't really worth the risk. Okay, I'm gonna look at this real quick. Okay, so you kind of catch them out here, kind of. But again, well, you have okay vision in this area, I guess. Yeah, honestly, you guys handled that fight okay. It's just that they're so far ahead at this point that it's really hard for you guys to be able to do anything. There, I mean, there's probably things you could have done better, but like, like big picture-wise, that fight was okay. You kind of caught them out. The one negative thing is you let them drag you into a place where you didn't have great vision. And then you, in particular, overextend. Because the second, like... So the thing, you know, in order to stay alive for the whole fight, you got to be aware of all the threats to you. So when you look at this team, who is a threat to you? So in a standard team fight, where like the front line set up and the back line set up, you know, if you guys are just kind of facing each other like they're British versus the Americans here, and you know your line, your battle lines are drawn. You got tanks in the front and DPS in the back. So you got to be worrying about who, who is the mo who is able to just you know, kind of just blitz past your front line and actually target you immediately. Pretty much Zed. If Graves tries to do that, he'll get eaten alive by your tanks. If Uter tries to do that, he might not get eaten alive because he's pretty tanky, but he won't be able to get past them to kill you if they're peeling appropriately. 
Cho'Gath isn't really that big of a threat. By the time he walks up to you, he doesn't have any gap closes or anything, you should have been able to easily kite back away and then Cho'Gath dies because if he's just going to tunnel on you and walk through your whole team while you're kiting back, then he's going to die. So these four can't, or those four, and Brom, who cares? Brom's not going to do damage, so he's not going to do anything to you. So Zed is pretty much the only one that can, like, you know, just jump past your front line and attack you. So that's the one you need to be aware of in a team fight. Like, you know, by default, that's who you need to be most aware of. Situationally, you might need to be aware of these guys, but by default, you got to be aware of him. So if you're ever in a situation where you guys are chasing like this, and you think you've got him on the run, and you don't see Zed, and you do not know for a fact that you're out of Zed's range, you have to stay back until you establish the facts otherwise. You let your team go into this bush and you stay back. You know, or, you know, as your team is kind of chasing into this bush, you just kind of swing out here, right? You don't follow in here predictably and easily in range. You swing out here, and you're, so you're still able to pump out DPS, but you're only interested in pumping out the DPS on the target that's closest to you. You don't care about these people who are out here. You care about the target that's right here. And you can attack him from here just as easily as you can attack him from here. But if you're here, so let me just draw this out so it's a little bit easier to see. So the enemy team, you know, there's a target right here and a target right here. And then you don't know where the rest of them are because you don't have vision. You know that they're all in here because you just chase them into this area. So maybe you see one more. So if your team is all chasing up through here, right? They're chasing into this bush because you guys got them on the run. And you are here. You are putting yourself at a disadvantage. Vision-wise, it's harder to see everybody because you're at an angle. So, you know, you got a ward in this bush, so that makes it a bit easier. But you're at a disadvantage here because you can attack this guy, which is fine. That's who you want to attack. You want to attack the closest target. That's what you want to do, so that's great. But if Graves is standing right here, he can attack you. If Zed is standing right here, you're dead. If Cho is standing right here, he can knock you up from this range over the wall. You know, they, you are, you are in danger in this position because they can all, you know, several of the people can affect you, not just Zed, but several people can. If instead of just following your team in the situation, if you swing out to here and do damage, you know, do damage to that target from, you know, wherever you're in range right here or whatever, you're still able to damage that same target, the one that you need to be targeting, but you're no longer in danger from all these people. And if Zed wants to attack you, then you have a clear route to just back straight up and let your team peel for you. And he, Zed has to then walk through your whole team instead of having some kind of back door. Now admittedly, Zed is doing well enough and he is slippery enough that he still might be able to get you. But if you are playing this appropriately, it'll be difficult enough and it'll take long enough that your team will be able to take advantages back. And by the time he's able to kill you, they've been able to kill one or two people and it's an even it's even at that point so anyway you're again and and if you and if you know that zed is going to target you then even more so you can just play, play this even further back until zed decides that you're too much trouble to get to and picks another target and then you go in as soon as zed ults you know freaking aurelia or something who cares that's you know now you're alive now you, you know now you don't have anything to worry about anymore and you can just you can just come in here and just start slamming people so even if you have to like hold off on your dps for a second or two until zed picks another target Make yourself difficult to hit if you know that's what he's going to do. And then... Uh, oh, and you guys walked into a blind fight. Got five-man Braum ulted. So there you backed off from Zed. But by the time that happened, it was too late. Everybody was low. And they've all got you on the run. And that's going to be the game, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, so in lane phase this game, uh, I talked about a lot of opportunities that you should be pressuring uh, Graves a lot harder. You need to be warding better. And you need to be pressuring Graves a lot harder. He was able to just pretty much do his thing for free. You farmed okay. But you can, you can improve your farming and your last hitting techniques to the point where you can do that just as effectively while still pressuring uh, graves. So work on that. Um, in situations like you were in, you need to be in team fights. You need to be prioritizing staying alive. Absolutely not prioritizing getting kills. Never. Forget kills. 
prioritize staying alive in fights so that you are doing as much damage as humanly possible. So in team fights, you got to you got to do that with your positioning. You got to do that with your targeting. You got to do that with your, your general decision making. You got to stay alive. Uh, in when you guys are looking to fight and set up fights, you got to judge: are you guys the ones with the momentum, or is the enemy team? If the enemy team, you got to fight a defensive fight where you are drawing them into a situation that you have set up, ideally under a turret, so it's fighting for you. Um, and a big part of that is vision. So I'd like that you upgraded your yellow trinket. Um, it would have been nice if you upgraded it a little sooner, but I like that you did it. I like that you did by a QSS. But if you had come out of lane phase a lot further ahead by pressuring Graves, that would have set the tone differently for the whole game. And there's a lot of you know incidental things I pointed out that could have gone better or gone differently. But that would have been a big shift for the entire game. And then there's a couple of team fights where you ended up dying really early because of positioning. That could have really affected things differently too. So farming, farming and pressuring in lane, vision control during lane phase and then during uh, mid and late game when you guys are being pressured and positioning in team fights. Those are kind of your three things to work on and focus on in your, in, as you go and as you're playing your games. So they're kind of generic basic things, uh, but they're really important. And if you can master them or continue to master them, uh, you will continue to see upward progress in your um, in your win-loss ratio. Cool. Thanks for a chance to take a look at this game. I hope it's helpful, and best of luck.